Today we're going to talk about the best shoes to wear after a fifth metatarsal fracture. Hi, I'm James McCormick from flawlessphysio.co.uk and jamesmccormick.com. I'm a knee, foot and ankle specialist with a keen interest in footwear advice for patients. Today we're going to talk through the three types of shoes that we recommend most often to our patients after they've had a fifth metatarsal fracture. It's important that most fractures go into a boot. Typically they spend four to six weeks in a walker boot before transitioning into a shoe. We've written an article which we've linked in the description about how to and when to transition from a walking boot into a more traditional running shoe or walking shoe. And today we're going to talk through three of our favorite shoes to recommend to our patients. The Asics Gel Nimbus, the New Balance 880 and the Hoka Bondi 8. We're going to try and categorize them into levels of support for you so that you can make a decision of what works best for you. So first off, we've got the Asics Gel Cumulus 24. It, as you can see, it's got FF Blast cushioning and it's got a gel pad between the cushioning and your foot. So the gel cushioning helps to absorb the impact when you hit the ground and the FF Blast cushioning is a responsive form of cushioning so when you place weight through the shoe it helps propul propulse you forward. It helps to absorb the shock and impact when you walk to take the pressure off your fifth metatarsal. The normal shoe width is generally a relatively wider shoe for the newer ASICs so you don't need to worry too much about compression on the forefoot. It also has a deep heel cup which helps to stabilize the ankle when you hit the ground. Overall, we'd say that it's got a mild to moderate support and cushioning and it's one to consider if you have a relatively stable foot. Next up is the New Balance 880. The Fresh Foam X cushioning in the 880 is the softest and the highest density that New Balance have to offer. So it really feels like you're walking on a cloud. The New Balance come in a generally wide fit, so again there's no need to worry about compression across the fifth metatarsal. It's got a 10mm heel drop, so the difference between the back to the front. So it's not too high so that you don't get too much pressure on the forefoot when you're walking. And you can really feel the benefits of the extra cushioning when you're walking or running. Finally we have the Hocker Bondi 9. It's one of the most cushioned and lightest shoes on the market. So while there's a bigger midfoot stack, so the amount of cushioning on the shoe, it's actually lighter than the other two shoes, so it's quite deceptive. You can get it in all forms of colours, so don't worry if you're fond of a more neutral colour like a navy or black. Fortunately the Hoka offer a normal size width, a wide and an extra wide, so you've got lots of options depending on your foot type. The cushioning is a plush type of cushioning, so again, very much like, feels like you're walking on a cloud. For day-to-day -day wear and casual runs, this is definitely the most comfortable and most likely to absorb the vibration from the ground as you run to protect your fifth metatarsal. So that's our three recommendations. We've done them in order of the amount of cushioning that you might like. Also, it's important to think about if it's more responsive or plush cushioning if you want to run or do faster runs after your fifth metatarsal fracture. If you're interested in more information on the best type of exercises that you might do after a fracture, uh, we'll put a link to an article and YouTube videos that we have on that in the description. If you find the information helpful and you decide that you want to choose one of these shoes, we'd appreciate if you can buy it through our affiliate links. It helps us earn a little bit of money to keep the channel going without affecting the price of the shoes. Otherwise, please share, like and subscribe.